guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back for another DIY room makeover. Today's video is all about the half bathroom in our downstairs and I am so happy with how this room turned out. It started off as a completely blank slate. If you've been following for a while, you may remember there used to be a full-size towel bar in here. We did take that out like months ago, but we never patched the holes. And I also was testing some paint swatches on the wall, so nothing terribly wrong with this room. It just wasn't very exciting and the wall on the side was a little bit ratchet after all of my experimenting and DIYs that happened before this video, but we are gonna do a complete transformation on this room. New floors, new paint, all kinds of fun things. Most of these things will be renter friendly. We are renting this space. So we did paint the walls, but I fully intend on painting them back to the original color. So if that's something you can do in your space, you can do this as a renter friendly project yourself. First thing I am doing in this space is cleaning the floors very, very well because we will be doing a really fun renter friendly floor upgrade. I picked up these floor pop tiles. Um, I found them on their website originally, and then I realized they're available on Amazon. Prices fluctuate and their website seemed mostly out of stock, but they had a couple great patterns. I actually picked up two because I couldn't decide, but ultimately loved the black and white contrast of these little hexagon tiles. I also picked up a cutting mat, and a little X-Acto knife to help me with trimming these down to size. And so we're gonna jump straight into this. The floor is clean and dry now, which is step one for this process. And now I'm gonna just start sticking these tiles on. They are just giant stickers basically that are really tacky and really thick and really high quality. So I'm just placing the first couple in the middle of the room so I don't have to do any cutting to them. But you'll see we start running into the baseboard so I have to start trimming. This was a long process for me guys. This probably took me five or six hours. I brought my laptop over to the floor, put on some Netflix, and just spent honestly an entire afternoon down here. I took my time cutting and I like measured three times so I could only cut once and I wanted to make sure that each of these looked really nice because this is one thing that can look really really tacky and cheap if you don't do it right. I also should mention that everything I'm using in this video I will link down below if I can for you guys. If it's not linked down below just reach out to me and I would be happy to go hunting for it for you guys. I know that these videos can be motivating to be making over and freshening your own spaces so I want to make sure you guys are able to find all the tools that I use in this video to make my space fresh too. So one last thing I'm gonna say before I go quiet for a little bit, liking and commenting on this video are the greatest ways to show me support. That tells YouTube you like these videos and it will actually promote these videos to other viewers so other people can find this video. So if you are enjoying this, if you enjoy my channel and wanna support me at all, it is completely free to just stop, like, and comment on this video and I will always be grateful. I'm also always replying to my comments so I can't wait to see what you guys say about this space. All the days we spend together After cleaning up a little bit, I am gonna grab some heavy books and place that on all of the corner seams. I'm gonna leave it like this for a day or two because I want to make sure that these tiles aren't lifting up. I have noticed that some of the corners do lift up, but you'll see that I have a solution for that later on in the video. Now it is time to start painting this wall. So I did a lot of pinning on Pinterest, a lot of research. I played with the idea of doing just a single accent wall. I thought about doing removable wallpaper, but ultimately I ended up on this really awesome, kind of a chair railing, kind of board and batten, 
a little bit of a hodgepodge of both. I'm not sure exactly what you would call this, but I am going to paint the bottom half of the wall gray. I'm not going to paint the top half of the wall. I'm going to leave it the original color. And then eventually you'll see we're going to add a piece of trim along the split so it looks super finished and seamless. But step one, we have to paint the room first. So I am going around the room and taping off, making sure it's nice and level so I have a clean, crisp line for when I start painting this wall. If you guys are following me over on Instagram, you will know that there were some struggles in the paint department. So this color right here is actually the first paint color I picked out from Home Depot. It is the color Sparrow. And so I'm gonna start taping off the electrical outlets and just start painting this room. The idea for this paint did not really come together until like the morning I went to go buy this paint. I didn't really have a vision for this room until finally it slowly came together, if that makes any sense. So I hadn't put a lot of thought into this and went to Home Depot and just picked out a color of gray and bought it and you'll see later on it was the wrong color of gray but I am going to show you guys me painting the room to see how it first starts coming together. I ended up using this paintbrush here to paint the entire room because it was such a small space and so many corners and the vanity and the toilet. I just didn't want to bother with getting a paint roller. And guys, I love this paintbrush. I found it in Home Depot one day after reading about it on a random blog post. I will link it in the description bar for you guys if you're looking for a paintbrush or you have any paint projects. It's super affordable, super easy to hold. It has like a rubber bendable handle. I just love it to pieces and I've used it for so many projects now. But like I was saying, I used it to paint the entire room, which probably made it take a little bit longer, but overall I think it was the right choice for such a small space. Now this was the point where I was second guessing this entire project. At this point, I was like, I chose the wrong paint color. I should have never painted this room. I was wondering if I should just paint it all back to the same cream color and go in a completely different direction. But I had made two big mistakes in this room so far. One, I did not paint the baseboards yet. I was kind of scared to take the leap, but for this look of this monotone split wall, painting the baseboards changed so much. I loved this room so much better once I did paint the baseboards in here, but this is also when I decided the paint color was just too dark. It was too dark of a gray. It was drying to a much darker color than when I was originally painting it on the wall. So I'm gonna try a little trick here that did not work at all, so I don't recommend it, but I thought it was funny that I tried this, so I wanted to keep it in the video. I had a can of white chalk paint left over, so I wanted to mix some of this into the paint, but I think because it's different consistency, the chalk paint is significantly thicker than this latex wall paint. The chalk paint just sunk to the bottom of the can. So here I am painting the rest of the room thinking it's going to be a much lighter color when it turns out the two paints had just completely separated and I was still just using the same color gray. So I do end up painting this entire room that same color gray and then Christian came home and he was trying to encourage me to just live with the color. It wasn't too dark. It's not like I painted it black and then ultimately we decided that we're just going to sleep on it. We're going to let it sit overnight, see how we feel with fresh eyes. Because when you're working on these projects, you can get a little bit stir crazy, a little bit of tunnel vision, and sometimes you just need to step away from the project for a little bit. I think that happens with a lot of things in life, like working on school projects. I remember writing papers and just feeling a lot better and more refreshed if I stop and take a break for a day. If I come back after a full night's sleep and Thankfully, we had the clarity in the morning that it was still just not the right paint color, but I will recommend if you ever get a little bit caught up in a project being overwhelming, take a break, take a breather, take an extra day to truly think through the project and you'll have much clearer eyes.
So here we are with paint can number two. We went just one shade lighter. The name of the first color was Sparrow and this color is Natural Gray. So I'm not gonna show you me painting the entire room, but here you can see the paint going on the wall significantly lighter than the previous color. And of course, Bucky is here to keep me company for all of this process. I took these next clips before we started painting, but I wanted to showcase how the tile, when they're not cut perfectly, look really bad. Like it looks like it's an unfinished job, not clean, it looks kind of sloppy and like a DIY fail. So Christian had the idea to actually put a little bit of shoe molding down on the bottom. So we have our baseboards here that like obviously came with our house, I feel like most flooring has baseboards, but you can also do something called shoe molding, which is a little extra lip you can add. So here I'm just gonna be taking the measurements of the entire room and then cutting these down to size. These moldings are the same molding I put on the walls in our dining room makeover, so I did DIY wall trim with them, but now we're gonna use them for their real intended purpose, which is to go along the floor and along the baseboards. This way we're gonna hide all of the ugly seams that didn't line up perfectly, and it's gonna make the room look a lot more polished and put together. But first, we have to cut them all down to size, then we're gonna paint them, then we're gonna install them. And while I was repainting the bathroom, Christian was prepping the trim piece that's gonna run along the middle of the wall. So basically, he just ripped a large board down so with the measurements of these two pieces are about one half inch by one inch, and then he glued them together with wood glue and some clamps to make an L shape. This is gonna be the trim running the whole wall, so I'm just going to be cutting these down to size also, and then I'm gonna be painting the shoe molding and this wall trim. Lots of trim. It's probably one of my favorite things to do to different rooms because it looks like it's part of the house and looks professional when done properly, but it's also pretty affordable and really easy to do DIY style. You don't even need a saw like this to be doing any of these DIYs. There's actually on Amazon, I'll link it down below for you guys, but it's called a miter box and saw, and it's just a little hand saw and a box that has like notched areas so you can cut smaller pieces of wood down to 45 degree angles so you can make all the corners match up. But that's a way to do this project without any power tools, super simple. Another way to do it is at Home Depot or wherever you buy your lumber, they will trim it down to size for you there. So if you come prepared with your measurements, they'll do most of the work for you there. The lumber we bought was pretty cheap, so it splintered a little bit while we were cutting it. So I'm just sanding down the sides to make it as smooth as possible. And then we're gonna go in with that same paint color and paint the shoe molding and the wall trim pieces. Time for the question of the video. I would love it if you guys would go down to the comments and answer this question, and it's what room would you like to make over in your house? I'm not asking if you have plans to do anything or already have Pinterest boards lined up, but like right off the top of your head, what space in your home would you love to do a little DIY makeover to? So here is the new color of paint. I don't know if you guys can tell a difference, but just trust me on this one, there was a huge difference. The room is now light and bright still. With the darker color, it felt like an even smaller space than it was, so I didn't want to get that wrong. So with that now done and the trim pieces drying, I wanted to get the room ready because guys, we're getting closer and closer to the end of this video. I'm now going to pull up all of the tape carefully, trying to not peel up any of the floor tiles, and then also take off all the tape from the fixtures that I was trying to protect. I 
normally like to remove as many fixtures as possible. It just makes the paint job look cleaner and crisper than trying to paint around things. But one screw in this light switch plate was just stuck, so I had to tape around it and leave it up. I also had some paint swatches up on the wall still from when I thought I might paint this pattern over the whole wall. If you're looking for a fun wall pattern, go on to Pinterest and look up sponge wall art. That was a very close contender for being this accent wall. But like I mentioned earlier, some of the floor tiles were lifting in the corners a little bit, which is the opposite of what these floor tiles were supposed to do. So I went to the manufacturer's website and they recommended getting a hair dryer, warming up the corners that are lifting so it's nice and hot to the touch, and then placing heavy objects on top of it overnight. And I can tell you guys with certainty that this trick works. It fixed all of the lifting corners the only thing is now I'm a little worried that it's like really really stuck to the floor and it's gonna be kind of difficult to take off when we move out but that's a problem for future Allison now moving on to the wall trim that had dried nicely and I am gonna take this Gorilla Glue mounting tape normally I just use a scotch mount tape but this Gorilla Glue one was clear which I thought was interesting to maybe even make it a more seamless and invisible transition but honestly it was so hard to peel the backing off of these little pieces of tape that I switched back to my tried and true but I will link both down below if the clear option is one that you like but now we are putting in all of the shoe molding attaching that to the baseboards and then using the scotch mounting tape we're going to put on all of the wall trim these going up on the wall really truly brought the room all together and took away any of my fears some of the pieces didn't quite fit when I put them in the wall, so I had to trim down one or two of them, but ultimately, I did really well in my measurements, except for one little corner you'll see in a second, and I'll show how I fixed it. I am always going to recommend, though, for these kinds of things when you're cutting wood or cutting trim, measure two, three, four times, and then cut once, because once you cut it, you can't really go back. Here's my one little boo-boo, and it was terrible that it was on the longest piece of wood that we had cut. So I did not have any scrap wood that would be long enough to be able to redo this entire cut. So instead, I measured how big the gap was, cut a piece of wood to fit in there, and then crossed my fingers that the magic Elmer's wood glue filler would be able to solve this problem. And spoiler alert, it does. I am going to take the wood filler to every single seam that I put on the trim on the walls. It'll fill any of the gaps that happen where they meet up and where the joints meet, and it just makes it look really flawless. This is one of those things that make it look more of like a professional job and less of a DIY, like someone walks into your house and be like, oh, did you guys do this room? It looks great. This will save you from that because it truly makes this seamless and flawless. While the wood filler dries, I'm going to do another tidy up. That's another tip for these projects is that they can feel super overwhelming because your space gets super overwhelmed. My house normally gets overtaken by these projects. You can see all the little pieces of tape from the mounting tape that I put on the trim, my hair dryers out, paint cans, all kinds of mess. So use the time where you can't be working on your project like when paint's drying to clean up your space. It'll help keep your sanity. But after a little while, I went back in with the same color of gray and painted over all of the white wood filler. That's the great thing about this product is it's paintable and blends right in. Now time for decorating. I originally wanted to put floating shelves above the toilet here, but I just didn't think it was going to look right with the trim going along the wall. So I decided to go with a simple framed photo. I'm actually gonna change out the one I just hung up. You'll see in, in a little bit. And then we also have the bath mat in here. This previously was in our old apartment bathroom, but we don't need it in our current bathroom, or at least our master bathroom. And honestly, these tassels just look a little gross at this point. I've run this through the washing machine a couple of times and it's, 
it's seen better days, but to give it new life, I'm just gonna trim the tassels off and then also throw it in the washing machine with some Clorox Boost. But here I am just doing trial and error with all the decorating. That's what most of the decorating is. I feel like when you're doing the big changes in the room, like the flooring, the paint, the trim, that needs a lot of pre-planning. But when it comes to decorating, I am definitely a trial and error person. I need to see it in the room. I'm not sure what's gonna work until I actually physically put it there. So you'll see me playing around here with a bunch of different options and also trying to work in more functional pieces for a bathroom, like a toilet scrubber and also a trash can. The one big bummer about not doing those floating shelves though is those were gonna provide a lot of storage that this bathroom does not have. So here I'm gonna be adding this little basket from Target and filling it with toilet paper because I feel like in a guest bathroom, it's really important to have extra toilet paper available to avoid that like awkward conversation with any guests who ask for it. I don't know. Whenever I'm at somebody else's house, I feel a lot better when I can see the extra toilet paper just in case. And now it is a new day. Like I mentioned before, sometimes it's helpful to take a step back from the room. So I finished decorating one night and then let it sit overnight, woke up with fresh eyes and wanted to change a couple things around. And honestly guys, I'm still not dead set on this bathroom. Let me know if any of the decor pieces you would move around or change or do something different. And if any of the prints I did put above the toilet, I think I've put about three different ones up there at this point. But if any of them caught your eye, you guys can buy those from my personal Etsy shop, Place Called Home Co. It's going to be linked down in the description bar and there you can find my downloadable digital prints for sale. So here's the last few touches on the bathroom and now it's finally time to show you guys before and afters. With all the decor in here, I think we will be shifting things around little by little, but that happens in every space we make over. I also love that in this space, all of the decor I shopped from my own home. None of the decor pieces were bought or purchased. We just used what we had on hand and moved them around from room to room. So if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more room makeovers, I have an entire playlist. I will link it for you guys here. You can catch up on all of the other rooms in this house that we have done. And if you are new here and you don't know, this is a room makeover series. So the first Friday of every month I am sharing a new space in our home so make sure you are caught up on all of the videos and make sure you are subscribed to see more now I will be seeing you guys in my next video on Tuesday bye